Hey everyone, my name is Matt. Welcome to my shop. Today is January 31st and this is my weekly shop update. So last week I got outside and actually used the mill a little bit uh, for a few hours on Friday and Saturday. I spent most of the week in front of my computer and I decided that like on those two days I was like I just want to go outside, move around a little bit and just use the mill just to use it because I'm kind of I'm to the point of wanting to work on it even though I still have a lot of things to do on it. It's kind of nice just to get out there and actually use it for once. <laughs> so let's take a look at some viewer projects and then we'll head out and take a look at my progress on my log pile. First this week is a pair of mobile dry erase boards by Drew. He says he was able to source a lot of the materials locally and use traditional joinery techniques to hold everything together. And Drew also has a post over on his blog about making these dry erase boards and I'll leave a link to that down in the description. Next is a segmented bowl by Philip. This was made from wood that he found in his grandfather's workshop. He says the turning process was a little bit difficult because he just used some standard chisels and some very cheap and dull turning tools. <laughs> but in the end, he was happy with the way it turned out. Philip has a video over on his YouTube channel and you can check out about making this bowl. Next is the Children's Kitchen by Dan. <laughs> Dan made this for his two-year-old daughter for her Christmas gift. The countertops and shelves are walnut and all the handles and knobs and faucet were turned out of red oak. It's four feet long and the fridge is 32 inches tall. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Last of this week is a side table by Andrew. Andrew is new to woodworking and this is his first project. The table is made from cherry and he used only hand tools to build it. It uses mortise and tenon joints for construction and then shellac and poly for a finish. So I got out here and I was working down my small log pile. Uh, this is shrinking quite a bit which is nice because I really want to get it out of here so I have some more room for my trailer to go. So a few people have been asking about these beams that are on my trailer and you know what they're for. Uh, a friend of mine had a tree removed in his yard. He cut the uh, most of the the logs up in the cans so they're easier to move around um, and I'm going to saw them up for him and what I'm actually going to use these for is for load testing because I can stack these really nicely beside each other on the mill I can put a few of them next to each other and see what it's like to saw to cut something that's like four feet wide or wider I guess but one of the things I added is a winch mount for that end so I can move logs onto the mill really easily and that helped quite a bit so I cut up another six logs out of this pile and it's quite a bit smaller, which is nice. Uh, some of the stuff I cut was some elm. I cut some smaller pieces of elm. I think it's like four feet long. It's a little bit of elm. Some more spruce. There's my off-cut pile so far. And I cut this stuff leaning against the shed. So I've got some nice elm with some crotch in it. I have some shorter elm. This stuff's a lot darker. This is almost like a walnut color, which is really beautiful. Looking forward to using that for something. And then I have a few pieces of box elder from a small uh, box elder log that I cut. So really at this point, I'm just trying to spend some time at the mill, get some of the logs cut up, and kind of get more experience with it or get some more time with it. Um, at this point, I'm, it's kind of nice just to use it for once and not have to be working on it all the time. Um, so it's really nice just to be out here and actually using it. It's been a little warmer lately too, so that's been uh, quite nice. Uh, but my plan is to get rid of most of this stuff, get the guides fixed on the mill, and then at that point I can start doing some of this bigger stuff. So I'll do the load testing thing with these cants, and I'll start throwing some of this big stuff up onto the mill and seeing what that stuff looks like. I'm really excited about cutting that big stuff because uh, it's awesome. <laughs> it's just so big. And I think that's going to be make for some really fun videos of getting those things up onto the mill. Um, I know I've said it before, but I'll be using my trailer to move these things up onto the mill. Um, and that's how I got them all here. These are all from different places, or not from different, they're all from, this, the bigger logs are all from the same place, but they're not from anywhere near here, or not too near here. So I did have to move them right to get them this far. So moving them, you know, 10 feet onto the mill shouldn't be as bad, I think, presumably. We'll see though. <laughs> so I did shoot a fair amount of video on using the mill those two days. And I'll be putting together a video this week about that. So look for that this week. It's going to be a kind of a fun, just out there having fun, not really trying to like do anything crazy, just trying to get through some of the small logs and put some hours on the mill. <laughs> well, one thing I want to let you know about this week is this book, uh, Hardwood Edging by Scott Grove. I was fortunate enough to meet Scott last spring at the Northern Wood Show where my sofa table is being exhibited. Uh, he was one of the judges last year and it was really great to meet him. Uh, he's just a wealth of knowledge and he put out a new book I've been talking to him for the last year or whatever it's been since I met him and 
I, t I have to tell you, the stuff in this book, if you're if you want to do any patterning or anything crazy, the let me see if I can find it here. Most of this book is centered around the process that went into making this this thing. This. So just by looking at that, there's so much patterning there with all those pieces that had to fit together perfectly and be all the same curves and all those curves are not, you know, symmetrical or anything. So there is so much cool stuff in here on routing and templates and just tricks and it's it's crazy. I haven't actually read it all, but just going through it a little bit, a lot of really cool tricks. And I want to let you know about that one, especially because Scott is doing a little giveaway over on his website. So I'll leave a link to um, that giveaway page so you can enter that and hopefully win a copy of the book. And I'll leave links to uh, his website and his YouTube channel. You can check out as well. The guy is a wealth of information. So that's about all I have for this week. Thank you as always for watching. I greatly appreciate it. If you have any questions or comments about anything I talked about today or anything here in my shop, please feel free to leave me a comment. As always, I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. And until next time, happy woodworking.